welcome to the white paper review. Um, I'm Brian Boyce. The gentleman with the beard is Gordon Graham. And we're going to be talking about some white papers today. But first, Gordon, who are you? What, where are you doing this show? Well, I, I am known to many people as that white paper guy. Um, I wrote uh, the book, uh, White Papers for Dummies. And over the past 20 some years, I've written more than 300 of these things for companies all over the world from um, some big names that, that we've all heard of like 3M and Google and Verizon to lots of uh, tiny startups that um, nobody else knows. So I really think they're a great form of, of content that more people should do better. And, and, uh, and by the way, I'll introduce myself quickly. My name is Brian Boys, and uh, my little book is called How to, How to Write a White Paper in One Day. And it's just, it's over there. It's just out of reach. I would have to leave the screen to get it, but there's a link to it um, down below. It's for, um, anyway, we'll talk about resources more at the end. And um, Gordon, I just, I, to picking up your point, absolutely. We often pick on big companies that have poorly done white papers and We've pulled out examples of small companies that have done excellent white papers. And it's almost like it's not even the graphics or the, this massive design team. It's really the thought put into it and the strategy. It really levels the playing field. Um, and so the format of our show, if you haven't seen these before, we kind of do, we do um, a white paper where we like it. It's a, it's a good example of some things to follow. And then we'll do one where like it's, it's got some flaws or it's just one that we hate. It's really irritating. And we can kind of vent because <laughs> as white paper writers are like, how did this get, you know, how did this get made? Um, we try so hard and then we see some, some half-assed effort from somebody else and we go, oh my God, I would never have dared. We both understand though, it's often not the writer and it's maybe not even a bad uh, team manager, but there's some process in there that's, whatever someone's trying to play it safe and they just make a, a bad call so anyway i want gordon uh, you're going to go up first and you've got one that's actually a good example yeah i've got one that uh, that um i wrote that was uh it was very interesting so here we go so here's a white paper from a company called exact flat in toronto so i wrote this but when i saw the design i was horrified i thought the designer had gone crazy and that this thing was going to end up in the in the toilet and like i i said to them oh, i don't know i don't know about this and they said listen our audience are really visual people this is aimed at people that work in industries that do things like make seats for cars or boats or airplanes things where they have a, a three-dimensional shape and they have to stretch a two-dimensional cloth or material around it and then tuck in all the edges. It's like doing upholstery, right? But but on a manufacturing uh, speed. And one of the biggest problems is how to translate that two-dimensional shape, that two-dimensional material around a three-dimensional shape and, and without wasting a ton of material and without cutting one side too short and then having to do it all over again. So it's a, it's a nagging problem in that industry. And the audience are people that are looking at uh, AutoCAD drawings all day long. They're working with their hands uh, with material. These are like visual people. They, they're busy. They don't have much time. They, they don't love to read at work. They like to look at pictures. So this is what they did with this white paper. And I, I'm going to go through as I show you this and tell you how it actually contains what I uh, call for as the, as the standard items in what I a problem solution white paper but it takes you a while to notice them because the, of the design is so amazing okay so exact flat save time and money with fast accurate 3d to 2d flattening for industrial fabrics this is a two-page spread i'm showing you but look at those swirls going around when i first saw those i thought like what are the octopus arms doing in here? Why are there tentacles in here? And then I realized, oh yeah, look at those little triangles. Oh yeah, these are, this is the, uh, an AutoCAD representation of trying to, trying to put a, a, a flat material over a, a rounded surface. Okay, okay. So there's the executive summary. And you know what? If you don't, if you don't want to read, you go executive summary, bullets, bing, bing, bing. The next page. The next page is the problem. 
designing with industrial fabrics is slow and costly. That's the nagging problem that this, that this paper is written about. Oh, more bullets. Okay, and they're talking about motorcycle seats, car seats, uh, linings for trunks, saddlebags, all that kind of stuff that, that they're, the readers doing this would be called on to make and would realize, yeah, it's a real pain. Then we get a little uh, more analytical about the problem. Well, what, why is that such a big problem? Well, let's see, you're working on the screen, you're designing things on the screen, goes through engineering, um, but then uh, you have to go back, you have to go with your hands, you have to basically design the covering for a seat, and then you have to cut a test pattern, go it with your hands, and see if it works. And it's not going to work. So then you, you scribble some notes. It's like trying to make a, a, a made-to-measure suit for a, for a chair frame. You go back to AutoCAD, you do some more putzing around, then you, you cut another one, then you go back and try it again. So see where it says bottleneck. Orange means, you know, you're working on the screen. Gray is the bottleneck. And it's like, suddenly you're off the screen. Suddenly you have to go out there and, and through trial and error, see if these things fit. Oh. Wouldn't it be a great way if there is a way to stay in technology on a screen and do it right the first time this is the problem, the dotted line, and the solves the bottleneck. So if you're a visual person, that really communicates a lot. Oh yeah, I don't even have to, I won't, I won't even have to try to, they call it draping. They call it draping, right? So they model, they do a, um, a prototype, they take it out by hand, they drape it around, they scribble on it, then they scan it in again, then they uh, uh, you know, go back to AutoCAD and see if they can uh, put in the right fixes. Wow, this is an analysis of the problem. No other software or workaround solves this problem. This is the traditional solutions. And look, they're all underlined. So again, if you're a visual person, you just go, oh, you, why don't we just eliminate all the X, uh, access data points? And they'd say, oh, that won't work. Why don't we just squish it? No, that won't work. Why don't, can't we use that stuff that they use for sheet metal? You know, or they're using that for doing the car hoods and the fenders. That, won't that work for us? No, guess what? Metals don't stretch like fabrics do, won't work. So this is setting up the traditional solutions that people might think of and knocking them all down. A very important part of a rhetorical structure of what I call a, a problem solution because there's, yeah. there's no other alternative. All the other things you've thought about or heard about are not gonna work. And, and look, in one paragraph each, we've knocked them all down. And there's a little picture here. Oh yeah, look what happens when you squish or stretch something. <laughs> Doesn't look like it works too well. <laughs> look how economical this is. What an ideal solution would look like. Bullets, bing, 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 bing. And at this point, we introduce the new improved solution. And it's got some pictures again. Oh, it's software. Oh, it's, a, it's an add-in to Autodesk. It, it's five steps. It takes five minutes. This used to take us two hours. This has taken five minutes. Obviously, save time, save effort, save money. Um, and here's how it works. Oh yeah, there's only five steps instead of what was there eight before. Uh, saves time. Look at the bold there. Save new process saves time. New process saves effort. New process saves money. Conclusions. Exact flat for Autodesk Inventor is a unique new product that solves once and for all the 3D flattening problem. Whew. And you know what? Call up your Autodesk reseller, or or come to our website and get a, a free version you can try for 30 days. Believe me, folks, after 30 days, they're not giving it back. You would have to pry it out of their cold, dead hands. So I thought this um, white paper, it's not very long. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's only 1,200 words, it's one of the shortest ones I've ever written, but it's enough. It's all it takes. And here's about the company. Well, look at that. Look at that headline. It's like World War III has been declared. It's incredible. <laughs> like I saw that. And I'm like, well, why are you doing that? But it, it puts a bang to the end of it, right? We are finished reading about the company. I don't even care about the company. I just want to try the thing for free. So, you know, what you've got here is a, is a really visual treatment of what I call a, a problem solution white paper. And uh, as far as the, as the ratio of the words, this is also uh, pretty different, right? There are about 1,200 words in here of which 40% of them are talking about the product. 40%, that's more than I would ever recommend or ever do, but I think here it works because these people don't want to read one white paper 
and then have to go download another and, re and read another. They want to get it all in. How many pages is this? Look, look at this, eight, eight pages. And most of the pages have like a few hundred words on them and they all have uh, bullets and bold so that you don't even have to read much. You, you can get the message out of this paper with this design in probably about two minutes, you know, five minutes easily. So these people that don't want to read, this makes them not have to read. And I think it was highly successful. It put this company on the map. They're still going strong. Uh, Autodesk loves them. Anybody using it loves them. They they will not stop using it. It's a permanent addition to their uh, production flow that has saved, you know, hours and months and years of uh, time and wasted materials for anybody that uh, that uses it. So this was a case where what I thought didn't matter. They knew their audience. And they designed this for their audience. And I sometimes say to writers, you know, what you and I say doesn't matter. We've got this idea, right? I have these idea, this idea of the sections that should be in here. Sure. The only, the only thing that matters is whether it works for their audience. And this works, 1,200 words. It talks about the problem, talks about how nobody else has ever solved it, talks about uh, what you should look for in a solution, and talks about, hey, we have the solution and offers them a free 30-day uh, 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 use of it. I mean, that's it. That's all. Does a very nice job. And so after a few months or perhaps years, I came around to realizing this had been a great job that, <laughs> that they did. Speaking of thinking of the reader, you tailor it to the reader. And I, I'm, you've probably had this too, had clients who were... Um, in some kind of manufacturing, like brilliant in manufacturing, but not college educated people. So they're not gonna read, they're not gonna read something that looks like a university, you know, a, a, a journal paper, a research paper. And and so I just, it's like that would seem to be perfectly suited to the audience. That was a great example of, of what you just said, know your audience and tailor how how deep, how many words. I mean, that that's terrific. It's and especially you know what, if it works, right? That's the sign of a good white paper, right? Yeah, yep, yep. That's not gonna turn anybody off and have them think, oh, this is too hard to look at. I'll read this later. They're not gonna say, I'll read this later. They'll go, hey, hey, more pictures, more bullets. Wow, well, look at those, look at that, those shapes. That's what I look at all day long in AutoCAD. So yeah, you know, I thought, I thought that was really great, but it took me a long time because I was expecting this same old, same old white paper design that you write for somebody in IT or you write for somebody in HR who's used to reading. Yeah, I would, man, at 1,200 words, that's like, that's probably the bottom, bottom end of white paper. You know what I mean? I mean, that's yeah. lean. That's about as lean as you want to go. And that's yeah. a great example. Yeah. It's a great example of lean. Okay, so uh, Gordon, for the one I want to uh, show you today, and I wanna, I'm going to get your reaction <laughs> to it. I just, I just know you're, there's things you're going to hate. So I, you're, 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 you're gonna, he's going to be biting his lip while I talk <laughs> through this. So he's going to, he's going to want to jump in and comment. Um, so this is, it's, uh, it's put out by a company called Seamless, and um, it's just a very, it's a very short white paper. Um, I don't know how many words it has. It's not, it's the, the, the text is pretty dense. So I, I don't know. It could, it could be. 14 or 1500 words. Um, but anyway, so here's, here's what we're going to do. This is, this is the one that, where we talk about um, a white paper that could stand some improvement. And so this one could stand a lot of improvement. And so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go through the small problems that we see, and then I'm going to jump to the big, big problems. So I think, I think that's a good way to do it. So number one, I'm not crazy about the title. A white paper, it's a report. It has a little bit of seriousness. So kind of a kind of a little pun is not really appropriate unless it's supposed to be like a parody of a white paper. So I, I don't know, that, the pun kind of left me cold. Um, if you go into the white paper, the title is, what was the title? How online, on the cover, it's how online food ordering and billing can eliminate the hidden cost of feeding the office. But inside the white paper, it's got a different title. If, I don't know if you can see up at the top there, it just says, eliminate the hidden costs of feeding the office. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel like you should have one title and stick with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other thing is it only has two outside citations for all this wording. And there's like, there's more pages here. Look at um, those lovely paragraphs. Look at Well, yeah, I'm going to get into that in, in, a, in a second. So <laughs> it's kind of a list. It's kind of a list 
a white paper, it sort of has an introduction, what introduces the problem, then it sort of gives, it goes through the list of, actually, not really solutions, it's kind of a list of, well, sort of each problem and then how, whatever they're gonna suggest um, solves it. But like, like you say, the copy is not broken into paragraphs at all. And if you can go like down on that right-hand side, I've, I've heard that the rule of thumb is six lines of copy and then people's eyes blur over and it looks too long to read. It looks like too much, um, too much work, right? Have you, what, uh, Gordon, have you ever heard a, a rule like that? Uh, yeah, and I think it's getting shorter now. I feel bad about five. I okay. think I try and keep it to about four. <laughs> exactly. Just find a place to break it so people's eyes can skim it. Well, I don't even know what that copy block on the right is. It looks, I don't even know. It looks like compute, you know, it looks like that, the text they designers put in, you know, the Greeking is what it, it what it looked like. Okay. So anyway, and then there's no graphics. They talk about, they talk about food, but they don't really show any, um, food they don't they have like zero graphics which i that, they could have maybe they were told it? That, that, yes did you did you get to the end that's the end so maybe they were told this has to fit on on four sheets of paper and so you can't have graphics um <laughs> i don't know anyway okay so that's now now for the big problems my question after i read this was who on earth is this being written for um i was trying to think um they, they don't ever mention in the copy the person responsible for ordering food. It's just in general, the company. So I think yeah. it's important to have a specific reader in mind. And, um, I, and I'm going to get to this in a minute. The, the second thing is at the very end, they don't really say who Seamless is or what they do. They actually never say what Seamless is. I went to their website to, um, to kind of find out what they do. And I think they have something to do with online food ordering, but I don't know if they have software that does it or that they're a marketplace of restaurants. Go to Seamless for your city. I, it, it's so it's almost purposeless as a say as a marketing piece because it doesn't really explain, there's no payoff to who put this thing out. And then here's the third thing, and this is probably the biggest problem. Does online food ordering for the office really warrant a white paper? <laughs> I mean, is this, these are, I mean, they talk about, oh my goodness, you know, they, they, um, they talk about, oh, the money being wasted on, I'm just thinking of like, okay, so we, we spent $26 on sandwiches instead of, we could have only gotten away with $13 on sandwiches or something. I mean, it's really small potatoes in the problem of, of company budgets. We know people are expensive and computers are expensive, but I didn't know, I, that even, even you're not going without food, you're just doing a different way of ordering it. So there's a little bit less waste. And I think it goes back to that. They didn't say who does the ordering. They didn't really, you're not really sure who it's written to. And so my question would be, um, do the employees who usually order food at a company, and I'm thinking it would be like administrative assistants, like who, this is a very low level stuff, you know, um, interns, administrative assistants, maybe the office manager has to do it and doesn't really like it. Are they really the kinds of people that are going to read a white paper, something called a white paper on this problem? Wouldn't a different kind of marketing piece that's much simpler and brief and um, be more effective? So here's the, um, the they're trying to, we, we talk about white papers like using a little bit of, of fear. Um, and the one you just showed, it's like, did a great job of showing the failures, the things that don't work to solve this problem that could be a costly problem that was in manufacturing. So they're trying to scare us a little about the, the fear factor here and the waste in you know, online food ordering. And they said, um, if there is no one looking at the aggregated spend, no one can make a strategic decision about maximizing those dollars. And so that's... <laughs> That, that's majoring in the minors. Like, you know, your, our company is going to go under because we are not maximizing our spend on, you know, catering or food or, yeah. you know, pizza service for these, you know, out of office meetings. So I, I guess you could say it's kind of overkill, I suppose, and not very good overkill um, for a problem that's, I mean, I'm sure it's a problem, but it just doesn't warrant a, a white paper. Okay, Gordon, go ahead. I know. You're holding back. My my eyes my eyes are just rebelling. I am really uh, uh, proud of you. If you read this thing, I look at these paragraphs. I'm never going to read that 
I mean, if they said we're hanging you tomorrow morning, unless you read this, that maybe I, oh, taking the whole night, could force myself to read through it. But I read one line and then I go, oh my God, there's another 28 lines like that to go. Like it's uh, paragraph, yeah. pressing enter is free, kids. Pressing enter is free. Like, uh, <laughs> I, the, I the readability okay. on this, if we did a readability on this, I yeah. bet you it would be a real stinkeroo because one of the things readability uh, is based on is short paragraphs, right? You're supposed to use short words. The words here aren't too bad. The actual wording isn't too bad. The sentences, some of them look like they're kind of long, but the paragraphs are just a killer. And the typography is doing everything wrong, right? Like, so yeah. they're going, hidden cost number one, big. Yeah. The yeah. little item about that is actually the hidden cost. They've hidden that on us. Yeah. You know, yeah. we got to squint and say, oh, the total amount of money spent. And and this this metric, this 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 pull quote, ten that ten dollar lunch could end up costing the company close to a hundred dollars. Well, says who? Let's see a little <laughs> proof for that, right? I know I'm not even sure that's a little that. <laughs> usually because usually white papers are about, and we should reiterate this, they're generally about things you're gonna spend. A lot of money on so my guess is that autodesk software you were just talking about isn't cheap you know and so you need you need this evidence to, to bolster your decision and so you know how you order lunch and the, the thing is this one's this one's dated it hasn't aged well with um, uber eats and and online food ordering has kind of gotten a lot a lot more streamlined and easier so anyway yeah, but I thought honestly, it was you go to a... your CFO, you, you, you're the office manager, you go to your CFO and you know, that that $10 lunch is costing us 100 bucks. He's going to say, oh, really? You know, uh, where did, how did you figure out that again? I've got my calculator right here. How did you figure out that again? Oh, God. So, so it could have been, this could have been gussied up very well with simple fixes, breaking pictures up the copy, of food. Pictures throwing of in food. some pictures like, and that kind of thing. But it would not have solved the big, big problem, and the writing's not bad, but it would not have solved the big, big problem. Why in the heck are you doing a white paper on this? Well, because I generally say there's three uh, significant questions you ask, right, to tell if a company needs a white paper. Are you selling something relatively new? Are you selling something relatively complicated? Are you selling something relatively expensive? Well, a new streamlined way to order lunch uh, is, not that complicated. I just explained it, right? Um, it may be new, but it's not a whole new groundbreaking concept. Uh, and how expensive is it going to be if it's supposed to save you $90 on lunch? Oh, maybe it's $90 a day they're charging uh, times 360. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they've left off some, they've left out some important stuff. Like, yeah. I don't think there's a call to action there. Um, no. There's no uh, about the company, so you don't really know what the point of it is. I, I think somebody said like, we got to put out something. Uh, yeah, but you're right. It's got to fit in four pages, but it's got to be a white paper. And it's got to explain, uh, you know, the, the critical need for our uh, for our system in the, in this in this sector, but not targeted. Like, who is your audience? Did they know their audience? I, I don't think so because there. It, sometimes there's. It's like uh, I noticed. Sometimes it's like they're speaking to the CFO. Uh, about sticking to a budget other times yeah. they're speaking to the intern about yeah. like uh, other times it sounds like they're saying like you want steak you're getting baloney <laughs> you know it, it's it's such a mix and a muddle and uh, totally. i'm sure it didn't generate any uh results for them because it's unreadable yeah the design yeah. destroys it and it's unreadable and, and i think you've yeah. heard that from us uh many times over at this point is that the words and the design have to work together right they have to they have to strengthen each other. And uh, if they work against each other, then all the effort that went into the one is is wasted. And all the effort that went into that relatively clear writing, it looks like, yeah. you know, was wasted by terrible design and also terrible planning and targeting at the start. So, you know, they had sort of like one of the four legs to stand on and the other three they didn't really have. So great, yeah. great example. Um, yeah. And they just, someone just should have said, well, who's going to read this? As in the example you gave, it's a great example. They knew exactly the kind of person that was going to read this. This one, it, nobody really, I don't know, it maybe, got, maybe they did and it, and it got lost. But both Gordon and I, before, when, before we started recording, we've talked about, um, we've both talked people out of doing white papers. You're like, no, you don't. It's not appropriate. This is not appropriate for a white paper. It, white papers have this mystique, right? And people think, oh, a white paper is going to be the magic bullet 
to solve my problems, right? Um, and I'm sure many get launched that way. You know, many white paper projects get launched that way. But well, you can't have credibility if you don't offer something credible, right? So you can't, um, you know, make up this number about that ten dollars is going right. to. It's the same as the uh, the Oracle one from the other uh, from the day. They're pumping up. They're pumping up a number, right? They start with a tiny little number and they just keep pumping to the point of, of it, it being so ridiculous with yeah. no evidence that nobody's going to believe it. So especially yeah, yeah. finance people, especially accounting people, they're not going to believe these puffed up numbers. No. Like they'll go, uh, one of the examples was like, you set a $20 limit for lunch and somebody spends $21 and 25 cents. Well, that little dollar 25 doesn't sound like much, but believe me, that adds up like, oh, as though they don't have bigger problems, honestly. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. There's gotta be bigger things to focus on. Well, anyway, you guys, if you're, if you're still, if you're still with us, thank you for watching all the way through this, um, this episode, you can see Gordon and I, we just, we, we would, we would just talk about this with each other and we thought, well, maybe we could benefit some, some, some uh, other white paper writers by kind of discussing these things. And so we, we've hoped you learn. Um, if you need to write a white paper, if you need to learn about them, look down in the, the notes under the, the, the comments here, under the video, and we've got all kinds of resources for you. There's free stuff. Gordon's website is incredible for learning about white papers. You don't have to spend a dime. Get his newsletter. In fact, you can you can look at back issues, right? If someone yep. goes to sign yep. up, yeah, it's it's terrific for for an in depth um, take on them. His book definitely white papers for dummies. Um, you will not be a dummy by the time you're done. I just want to say that. So you'll start as maybe as a dummy. But by the time and you're Brian, done reading, you will not be a dummy when it comes to white papers. <laughs> and Brian has got uh, some uh, a collection of really fun videos on YouTube. If you'd sooner uh, learn from watching uh, videos, and uh, as well his book, How to Write a White Paper in a Day, is really a, a breakthrough. You know uh, that can that can help you get over that hump and get something down in a very short time. So uh, uh, hats off to you for uh, for that those mediums, uh, Brian. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and, and like, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye, Gordon. Bye. <laughs>